Hi guys, my name is Carla, I am forever jet lagged and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, I decided to show you my Emirates CV and the photos that I had to apply for Emirates. This is a video that a few of you requested and I decided to finally do it. So let's get started. <laughs> Before we begin, I want to apologize, I am a bit sick and this is going to be a shorter video, I'm only going to talk about the CV. I want to say from now that it was 2016 when I got hired, back then I was a kid, I had no idea how to do a CV, so my CV is done with Europass, I don't know if some of you know this program, if others don't. I'm going to show you what I did wrong with my CV what I did right with my CV because now when I look at it it's not what it was supposed to be now with my experience I know that that was not the perf the best CV that I could have had but I think it's a very good example of things to do things not to do in your CV and also it's a very good incentive to show that your CV is not the most important thing if they actually like it they're not gonna care that your CV is not perfect so yeah this is the disclaimer that i had to do now let's get started okay so first of all your cv doesn't have to be made with europass i'm not even sure if this website still exists canva is a very good tool for it if you have a free account it works perfectly if you have a premium account it's even better you can choose templates there you can choose designs you can add photos you can edit whatever you need to edit Canva is a very, very good tool. So use it, it's free, it's perfect. Back to my CV. I have my CV right here on my laptop and you are gonna have it here. So I'm gonna go through it and I'm gonna explain some stuff. Obviously, Europass doesn't need to be here necessarily. Very important is your photo. As you see, my photo is not very professional. It's actually from a party. I just liked the way I looked in that photo. I advise you to have a bit of a more, more professional photo. Like I said, this is a very good example of do's and don'ts in a CV. So my advice would be to have a photo that is a bit more professional. Mine, you can see the, the space above my head is way bigger than it should be. But anyway, uh, then, you know, your personal information, your name, uh, the job that the job that you're applying for which for me was flight attendant and then you have to start mentioning your work experience and your education and trainings any i don't know extra hobbies that you have extra accreditations that you have for me personally the work experience was <laughs> very little i was a front desk receptionist front desk clerk for i think it was one year when i applied actually it was less because it was july 2015 and in fir first of june 2016 i was already in dubai so it was less than one year but i did have some uh, some experience in customer service and this really helped but that was everything that was my whole experience i was still almost 21 actually also in the education and training you're gonna see here i have the EASA license which is because I did a flight attendant school that you're also gonna see here I can tell you from now Emirates does not care about your previous schools anything that is related to aviation they don't really care about there is not mandatory to do a course is not is not important but you know it was fun to do the course I learned a lot of stuff that did not apply in Emirates so my advice is don't do any type of this these uh, schools because if you want to apply for emirates they prefer to have you not trained in any way because it's easier for them to train you with their own standards and with their own uh, procedures than you having some knowledge that doesn't apply to emirates and you're used in a certain to do things in a certain way that is not the emirates way so it's a bit more complicated and then I only had my high school diploma, so I put it there and that's it with my accreditations. It's a very 
poor, let's say, CV. It's only one job that I worked in not even one year. It's some flight attendant school that nobody cared about. And my high school, which again is the most basic uh, level of education that you can have. So nothing impressive there. And now I'm gonna add the second page of my CV, which was a mistake. Again, a don't in your CV. Your CV should have only one page. Unless you really have a lot to say about yourself and you have like, I don't know, a million uh, jobs that you've been to, a million diplomas from different classes that you took or, you know, a high school diploma, master's degree, doctorate or whatever. Unless you have all these things, your CV should be only one page. And you can, uh, in Canva, for example, you can divide the page in two and you have, I don't know, on this side your education, on this side your work experience, or however you have to adjust it in the page, but it should be only one page. Anyway, on the second page, I had languages that I speak, which I put my mother tongue, which is Romanian. It wasn't necessary to put it there because they could see my nationality is Romanian. That's obviously my mother tongue is Romanian. So it's not necessary to include it. If you wanna stick to one page, skip all this unnecessary information that is common sense. Then the, the languages that you speak, this is very tricky. If you're gonna apply for Emirates, you only need to write down the languages that you are fluent in, the languages that you feel comfortable speaking. Because for example, English is mandatory, but here I added French as well. French, at that point, I still could speak a bit of French, but I wasn't very comfortable, you know, having a conversation. Any other language that you speak a little bit, unless you are very comfortable speaking it, don't mention it there. Why? Because Emirates is gonna count on you that you speak that certain language. And let's say you're on a flight, you are going to Germany and you are the only German speaker, according to your CV, on that flight. You have a medical case, the passenger that got sick only speaks German. If you're not comfortable in a stressing situation like this to speak German to that certain person, then it's not okay. Because you declared that you speak German, that you also speak German apart from your mother tongue and English. And in a situation like this, it's very important that they can count on you, that you can communicate with that person and here I'm, I'm talking about the worst case scenario, but it's very important to, to realize this because they need to count on you in case something happens in an emergency. If you are the only German speaker on that flight, you need to be comfortable to speak German, to communicate with whoever you need to communicate. So my advice here, don't mention any languages that you are not almost fluent in. Otherwise, it's not worth it. Here I put my French and you can see it's the C1 level. They asked me in the, in the interview, do you really speak French? You know, how's your level? We can see it's C1, but is it true? Is it not true? Can you have a conversation? Then I didn't know about this whole, you know, explanation why they want to know my level. But I kind of freaked out and I told them like, yeah, no, I don't really remember French. I don't remember how to speak French. I can understand it, but uh, I cannot speak. So. I removed it from there. I mean, I left it on my CV, but I never officially declared that I speak French. And that was it. No harm done. They didn't care about French. They only cared about the fact that I speak English. Obviously, if you're fluent in another language, that's even better. But um, yeah, don't try to pose or don't try to lie about languages because this is very important. And if you end up in that situation, and you don't actually speak the language, that's an even bigger deal. So don't even try to, you know, flower up your CV with languages because uh, it's not a good idea. And the rest of my amazing CV, like the communication skills, organizational and manager managerial skills, uh, job related skills and all these like digital competence, this was just because I had nothing else to put there. I didn't know that my CV was supposed to be only one page. I just felt like, okay, I need to put something there in order to show them that I'm a you know good candidate. So I just wrote whatever came to my mind to, to try to make it better. Again, this is not important. This is not related to the job. I put my driving license 
Emirates doesn't care if I can drive or not. It's not necessary, it's not mandatory. Your CV should be only one page. So to recap, Canva is a very good tool for CV uh, designs, CV editing, whatever you need to do, Canva is your uh, tool. Your photo compared to mine should be a bit more professional. Write down your uh, all your contact details, you know, email, phone, whatever. Your address is not necessary to be there. And then try to have your whole CV in one page. You can divide the page into, two, I don't know, two columns, three columns. If you want to put your skills as well, you can have three columns, one with skills, one with education, one with working work experience. Try to cut down any unnecessary details like your mother tongue or like i said your address nobody's gonna come to your door and knock and like tell you hey you got the job all these uh, job related skills you can mention them in the work experience column so you don't need to have them your i don't know driving license is not necessary to mention in your cv because in emirates you do, you're not gonna have to drive a car so they don't care about that this is pretty much it and now before we end i'm gonna show you the photo that i actually uploaded to the emirates website because after you get hired they give you some credentials you log in on the portal there you need to upload all your documents all your photos your medical checks you know the whole hiring process starts and um, on this platform i had to upload uh, my cv that i went with at the interview and uh, a photo like a passport size photo and i am gonna put it here this is the actual photo that i should have had in my cv and this is the actual photo that i put in uh, on the portal so this is a very good example of what your photo should look like as you can see my hair is very neat i'm wearing a shirt and a jacket on top i have red lipstick not a lot of makeup no glasses that's pretty much it so this is a this is an actual good example not the previous photo this is an actual good example of how you should do your uh, your cv photo and also the photo that you are gonna upload to the portal after you get hired so that was pretty much it guys for today again i'm sorry i'm a bit sick and uh, maybe i don't look so good or <laughs> you can hear my voice a bit weird next week i'm gonna come back with fresh forces hopefully i'm gonna recover by then stay safe stay healthy next week i will come back with a new episode like this video subscribe to my channel maybe turn the notifications on so you can see when i'm posting a new video just so you know i see all the comments that i'm getting i try to reply to all of you but it's, it's getting a lot and this is super exciting um, but I do see them. I do appreciate you. I, um, you know, every time I get a new comment, it makes me smile and it makes me feel like, okay, I'm really doing something nice for you guys. And yeah, I just want to thank you for all the nice comments. And I promise, I promise I will reply to every one of you. Have a great day, week, weekend, whenever you're watching this. And I will see you next week. Bye!